Doctors of Reddit, what is the most how the frick did that happen to you case you've seen? Not me, but a nurse friend. Guy comes in complaining of pain sitting down. Pain in his rectal area. She goes to take a look and this man's anus is so infected it was almost gangrenous. The infection wasn't just around the shit shoot, it had traveled inches deep into his body, literally oozing pus. One nurse had to excuse herself and almost passed out due to the smell. I was told, but no idea what caused it or whatever happened to the poor guy. Probably injecting drugs swamp of Dagobah style. 70 yo guy came into the VA clinic for a bad cough and admitted due to temp of 104 F. He was mine and I found lumps on his neck on exam. He had tuberculosis, scrofula. So, why does he have TB in the US? We do HIV test and he's and been with some prostitutes. He also developed some other complications and was finally discharged after 4 weeks. Poor guy got a cough from fricking. My cousin is a paramedic in a large city and had these stories. 1. Victim is a powerlifter with a home gym. Tries to squat too much weight, and on the upward push herniates his sphincter. When he got there the man had 6-8 inches of his small intestine coming out of his butt. Apparently the medical street slang for this is red socking yourself. 2. Victim is a man with a flashing fetish. Late in the night, he walks to a 7-Eleven, waits until the female cashier turns her back, and then opens his jacket so his erect member is lying on the glass countertop by the register. In a panic, the cashier grabs the first thing she could find, a can of tomato soup and in an adrenaline rage brings the can down on his erect dong. He said this apparently almost entirely severs the man's dong, which fully erect is moving a lot of blood through it. He said the man nearly bled to death and the 7-Eleven looked like a murder scene when they arrived. 3. Victim is a morbidly obese man, completely naked, masturbating with a can of soup lubed with honey he is shoving up his butt. In the process, he stimulates his prostate nerve too much, has a heart attack, and dies. That's what he responded to. A naked, sweaty, morbidly obese corpse with a honey lubed can of soup halfway up his butt. He mentions they had to make efforts to keep the victim's small dog out of the room, as the dog was quite drawn to the honey. Please don't think about doing M's unless you're willing to see some truly horrifying crap. Not a doctor but former psychiatric nurse. I have seen all manner of weird and wonderful things yet the most perplexing was a young girl we nursed in Piku with history of pica. When we took her for x-rays, due to her complaining her stomach was hurting, we found a belt buckle, a full size spoon and butter knife as well as an assortment of batteries. As far as I recall, as it was some time ago now, they had to operate immediately to remove and again if I recall correctly it was the batteries they were most concerned about as if one exploded started leaking it would have caused irreparable damage. I have never seen a set of x-rays like it and seeing was believing. Incredible how the heck she managed to get them in there but never underestimate the willpower of psychosis. Was working in A&E a few years ago. The witching hour was upon us and a man came in looking in some discomfort. He had a delicate issue in his nether regions. He was very embarrassed so off we went to a cubicle where he told us that he had fashioned himself a not made for purpose cockering out of a large metal nut. Unfortunately there was no venous return possible and his dong had become edematous, swollen, and painful. He thought, hoped, it might subside but then it started turning blue. By the time we saw it it was extremely swollen and turning black. If he thought he was saving himself embarrassment by waiting. He thought again when we called the fire brigade to bring their large cutting instruments to free his strangulated member. The urologist said he would keep his peace but may suffer functional problems in the future. That guy's freaking nuts. Disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I'm a paramedic. My first week on my internship, we responded to a fairly rural gas station for a male patient complaining of an altered level of consciousness. When we arrived on scene the patient was sitting in a chair in the dining area of the gas station. I introduced myself to the patient and was crouched on the floor in front of him trying to get him to answer my questions but he wasn't really giving me much. I looked down and noticed a small white worm making its way across the floor. I thought, well, crap, sir. I said I'm going to remove your shoe, and I did. As I did so, a cascade of maggots tumbled onto the floor. The entire sole of his foot was being eaten away by maggots. 
the patient was completely unable to tell me about his medical history or how his foot had come to be a buffet for corpse fauna. I double bagged his shoe, along with several dozen maggots, because I didn't know what else to do with it. His blood sugar was fine and he didn't appear to have a history of diabetes, and he had full sensation in the parts of his feet that weren't being chewed on. I still wonder about that guy. The only thing the patient was able to tell me was that he lived two states away and thought he was still in that state. And the most alarming thing to me about the whole situation was that he had gotten in his truck and driven two states over with no memory of doing so. Moreover how did you let us get this bad and not come in sooner? Patient came in Friday and 12.30. It's always Friday afternoon when they come in. Because why wouldn't you come in during the week before the busy Friday rush? Because suddenly you realize you don't want to go the weekend with something happening. So he comes into my clinic saying his eyes hurting. It's been hurting for a few months. Feels like pressure on the right side behind his eye and he's had a headache on that side that has been worsening. His vision is also worse than it used to be and things seem dimmer. My staff member remembered what happened a few months ago with a similar situation. Turned out to be angle closure glaucoma that needed surgery like 2 weeks ago. So she comes to me and asks me if I can see this guy because he's in pain and scared and doesn't want to wait the entire weekend to be seen somewhere else on Monday. Okay sure. I take him back and we go through everything. Vision is reduced. He's seeing distortions in letters. But everything looks fine from the outside. I dilate his eyes and take a look in his right eye. Right smack in the middle of his central vision is a huge elevated white lesion. We take some pictures and scans. I had to sit down with him and have a hard talk. Why did you wait so long? This has been going on for 3-4 months now. He's got history with colon cancer from a few years ago. I had to tell him it's very likely a choroidal melanoma. I sent him off to a specialist. I don't know if he'll lose his eye yet. I suspect he will. If he's lucky he'll live and just have to deal with having only one eye. If he's extremely blessed and lucky it will be treatable and he won't lose the eye. Good story, but ugh I have such sensitive eyes. Reading that has my eyes watering at the thought of it. My mother is an emergency nurse and a while back a 90 year old woman came into the department complaining of pain in her leg below the knee. After an examination my mother suggested an x-ray. X-ray comes back and it turns out the leg had been broken several months prior, snapped clean across both the tibia and fibula. And she had somehow ignored what must have been excruciating pain and continued about her life and then the bones had healed but not straight. The top of the bones were to the left and about 2 inches below where they were supposed to be and they had fused to the lower parts at the side like that. In the end there is nothing that could realistically be done as to sort the leg out would require a breaking it. Dang. I didn't know human bodies could do that. I'm not a doc but a medical technician. Still in college but you see some crap nevertheless. There was a guy who had a car accident damaging his cervical spine. Our occipital surgeon did an amazing job so after a long process of recovery the man was able to walk using only a cane. Another problem he had was some neurologic muscle idleness. Not sure if myasthenia gravis or something else, which made it hard for him to do any fine motor movements. Although he had all these health issues the guy insisted that he is independent so he did all of his daily activities on his own. The problem occurred when he went to his beach house on a vacation and went to take a bath. He lied into the tub and turned the water on. Then he turned on the hot water and realized that the faucet isn't the same as he had back at home and because of his motor skills being bad he didn't manage to turn the hot water off. Result 2-3 degree burns on the left side of his body. From head to toe as he was laying on his side. He almost cooked himself to death. I don't even get in the tub in my own house without testing the water first. It's just not comfortable even because you're sort of wet and cold. My doctor was very confused how 9 year old me managed to completely rip my big toes nail out at 3am. I tripped running down the hallway on the way back from the toilet. Cause you know monsters. And slid along my carpeted hallway. The friction between my toe and the carpet ripped it out. OMG. I think I just shaved 3 years off my life by reading this. A very tame example but here's one mum. An ex nurse told me. One day a patient came in who had basically no social interaction whatsoever. So he looked like a complete mess. With hair nearly down to his hips. As the nurses cleaned him up they noticed his hair was quite thick around his head. 
and they couldn't cut through it. it. Turned out the guy had been wearing a beanie for the last 10 years and his hair had just grown through it and over it. Wow I wish there were pictures on this one. Nurse here. A girl came into the air with a retained bottle cap over her cervix. That had been there 2 years. 2 years. Sounds like at home contraception gone wrong. I'm an PA. Patient tried to kill themselves by slitting left wrist. Patient was unsuccessful, as they missed the deep anatomy and arteries, but certainly cut bad enough to cause a heck of an infection. Fast forward a few months without seeking medical treatment and the necrosis had eaten up the vast majority of the forearm, exposing a large amount of bone and tendon. When I asked if it hurt, patient used an index finger, jabbed the exposed distal radius and said, right here, shudder. There was a patient in the hospital where I work, and one of his legs had gotten so infected it split open and maggots were living inside of the open wound, and he called them his pets. That sounds like a good reason to request a psych eval. Doctor. Multiple incredibly advanced cancers, mostly breast, head and neck, cervix, and anal. One or two vulva cancers that was particularly bad as well. Worst non-cancer case was during intern year. Morbidly obese man comes through ED, so large he had to have two bariatric beds pushed together. He wasn't to be my patient but he had a lot of anxiety and embarrassment with female doctors. For some reason we just had a connection. I really felt like he just needed to talk. Talked about his situation, home life, all of it. He had this calm and peace about him despite his health. He passed away two days later. At first it was hard to comprehend how life would come to that, yet in the end I understood. I'm sorry man I wish things had been better. Frick I'm glad I'm getting help. I just hit 500 this year and I refuse to go any freaking higher. I'm not dying in a hospital bed at 600 pounds. See? My neighbor was an ex-emergency room nurse. Whenever we would ask her about strange cases, most answers were you. Don't want to know. The only story I have is really strange. One day, a morbidly obese woman rolls into the emergency room. Her legs couldn't support her weight anymore, and complains about mild stomach pain. After letting several people with mild ailments get treated before her, she sits up and rolls to the staff-only water cooler behind the counter. My neighbor tells her about how the cooler is only for staff, and she starts to go away. Midway, she stops and from under her skirt a baby falls on the floor. Apparently this woman was pregnant and didn't notice because of her weight. How the heck didn't she feel giving the excruciating pain of giving birth? WTF. Edit. The baby lived, and apparently she just had intercourse without protection and was stupid enough to believe she wouldn't get pregnant. I'm not really sure if she kept it or not, but I'd like to think so. Doctors were surprised when little Thrid Grader me was brought in with a lacerated spleen and lungs gradually filling with fluid. I tripped and fell off of an 8 foot bridge into a creek on my dad's property, and a rather large rock caught my fall, hitting my ribcage just right. My dad thought I was just being a pee and told me to sleep it off, but 8 hours later my mom found out, they were divorced, and rushed me to the hospital. Thankfully, spleens are very good at regenerating and I made a full recovery with some physical therapy. So, my top moment of how the frick did that happen was I was on my internal medicine wards rotation. I had this guy in his late 60s come in. The air told me it was an admission, but they were stupid vague. So, whatever. I go in and I notice on his left hand was this golf ball sized blood clot with a bruise that extended to his elbow. Now, I want to make sure this image is clear. There was a black purple golf ball sized oozing ball on the back of his hand. Still with me? I, like with all patients, ask what brought him to the hospital. Well, you see, I went to my psychiatrist, cause I've been having problems sleeping. I wanted a sleeping pill you see, and, I immediately stop him right there and clarify so. You are here for a sleeping pill he says yes so I my psychiatrist didn't want to. I stop him. Say ha ha, no you are here cause of your hand. What happened with your hand he kinda ignores me, wanting to just blow it off. I refuse to let him talk to me about anything else till he tells me about his hand. Long story short, he was on a blood thinner called warfarin. There is a measure of how the blood clots called the INR. Normal people are around 1.0. People on Warfarin are often aiming for a 2.03.0 INR. His was fricking. 
9.0, and the mother wanted to leave when I told him that. I had to put him under a legal medical hold to fix it so that he didn't turn his head too fast and have a brain bleed. By the end of his admission, he admitted to like taking all the random OTC herbal crap online cause he read it was good for him. Friend of mine saw a lady in dermatology clinic with a basal cell carcinoma that she'd left alone for so long it had eroded into her orbit. The bit of the skull which houses the eye. A slow growing skin cancer that could have been cut out in a single visit to the doctor now meant she had to lose an eye through a massive skull surgery. And all because she didn't want to bother anyone. I used to work and supported living mental health residential care. I once had a lady insert a large pair of kitchen scissors into her tea. Luckily handles first. One Friday morning. I had the weekend off so when I got back in on Monday night she confessed and told me that they'd been there for 4 days and were starting to hurt. When we got to A&D they dismissed it at first due to her learning difficulties but after's raise we got sent to have them pulled out with forceps. She complained that the doctors and nurses weren't very nice about the whole thing. An old lady from church went to the doctor after her neck had been midly sore for a while, and it turned out that it had been broken for weeks. No idea how she managed to survive that. I broke my neck a few years back in an ATV accident. They're not always fatal or even paralyzing. Sometimes the fractures run parallel to the nerve column, so the nerves are never hurt. Not common though. I heard that roughly 0.5% of cervical vertebrae fractures don't result in nerve damage or death. Not me but my best friend is a nurse. Said the worst thing she ever saw was a guy coming after a motorcycle wreck. He was still moving breathing etc in the ambulance but once he got to the air, they had to cut his helmet off. Apparently the helmet was the only thing keeping dude alive. Once his helmet came off his brains splattered everywhere and he was dead on the table. I guess that's why they're called brain buckets. Patient, a farmer, needed complete bed rest. He convinced me that he would rest at home so was discharged. Admitted two days later with a crushed foot. His explanation, a beast stood on it. He meant a cow. As someone whose entire extended family grew up farming, never trust a farmer to lie down and rest if they aren't either directly supervised or tied down to the bed. Grandma is currently on her fourth broken hip because she just will not stop climbing up on the nearest stool or chair or whatever. Every time she wants to reach something more than 4 feet off the ground. Not a doctor, but a witness to something. My family went to Disney World a few years ago and we met up with some family friends. On the Space Mountain ride, the husband raised his hands, his wedding ring got caught on something above him, and it ripped his finger almost completely off. It was hanging by a piece of skin. Thankfully he got into the air soon enough to save his finger, but he can't move it and doesn't have feeling in it. This is why I don't ever wear jewelry. Spent years as a marine aircraft mechanic and every 3 months they show you the same dang pictures of the same mishaps and remind you not to wear jewelry. I guess it took. Thanks for the reinforcement. There used to be a brand of vacuum cleaner looked like a sideways barrel on 4 wheels with a suction port on one end and an exhaust on the other. It was just the right height and circumference for doggy style non-organic humping. One year the new model comes out in the metal. High speed fan that provided the suction had been moved from the exhaust side to the suction side. That year a whole bunch of men appeared in us across the nation with the same story to explain dong lacerations. They were vacuuming in their bathrobe when somehow the robe opened and the dong got sucked into the vacuum. Not a doctor but a paramedic told me this one. Got a call to a house where a teenage boy had suffered a dong injury. Remember those glass stirring rods from science class? Kid took one home and put it down the aisle of his dong. It broke. Shudder. My tea just closed up in sympathy oh my god. God, so many. Not a doctor but a nurse practitioner in the air. Toy car in a condom in the butt. Giant pill bottle in the butt. The best is probably the guy who was being a good Samaritan and picking up the garbage bag in his neighbor's driveway and, sure enough, a needle, slipped out and got lodged in his left AC. Our surgeon called him on his bulls, which was hilarious. S. H. User. Bulls. Really why can't people just get proper adult backdoor play toys? They're not that expensive. Ophthalmology here. I was called to the ED to examine a teenager for a gunshot to the eye. He heard a knock at the door, looked through the peephole and was shot directly in the eye. 
Unbelievably the bullet stayed within the orbit without penetrating the brain. So when I saw him his globe was ruptured. But he was playing a video game that I had to take away to examine him. My friend is a doctor and he once had a patient who accidentally shot his dong off because his gun went off in his pants. Still a third year med student, but my dad is a psychiatrist who used to work for the Center for Victims of Torture. I knew it was a really bad day as a kid when he came home and just sat, watching us, crying. Ouch, this one hurt. I work at a hospital. And about a year ago, we had a guy come in that had injected carb battery acid into his arms. The ED doc had no clue how to treat him. Not sure what ultimately happened to the dude. This was about 10 years ago when I was a pediatrics resident. I had a patient from a juvenile detention center admitted for sudden inability to walk or stand. He started peeing brown and it was found he had rhabdomyolysis, severe skeletal muscle breakdown that was threatening to shut down his kidneys. He had no idea how this happened and claimed he woke up and suddenly couldn't use his legs. The second night of his admission his mom and sister came to visit. His mom left, but his sister stayed the night in his room. The next morning, I go to his room on rounds to discover this dude boning his sister in his hospital bed. Keep in mind this is a children's hospital with butterflies on the walls and little kids being pulled in wagons by their parents down the hallways. Needless to say, all heck broke loose and the truth came out. This sister was actually his girlfriend who was implicated in his weapons and drug charges and who he was forbidden by the court to have contact with. The cops came and dragged her away while she screamed and cussed us all out. Stunned parents of other patients looked on in horror. The guy's rhabdo eventually cleared and he didn't need to go on dialysis. He started to regain strength in his legs. Before discharge, he finally admitted what triggered the muscle breakdown and his leg weakness he did 1000 leg squats. All to get released from juvie and see his girlfriend. I presented the case at morning report the next day and called it the Sawshank Redemption. Not a doctor but a nurse. Patient had zero skin on his dong. Zero. It was nothing but the muscle. It's actually fascia not muscle. I was using muscle to help facilitate the image of what it looked like. I had to put special ointments and stuff on it. The reason being. Diabetes. Apparently his GF nicked him with a tooth during oral. Since diabetes creates delayed wound healing. It started becoming necrotic. But caught it early enough they could just remove the skin before it got into the deeper fascia and compartments of the penis. Otherwise dude Walder lost his junk. I was using the word muscle to help people picture what it looked like as not everyone knows what fascia is meant in my experience. Not my patient, other than fellow residents. He's presenting an admission from the previous night to the attending senior physician. A woman with some intellectual disabilities and some stereotyped behaviors. One of which was picking at her scalp. Her caregivers had been trying to take care of this but finally brought her in when they noticed that the hole was getting kind of deep. My co-resident was describing the physical exam and said something like there was a 3 cm defect in the scalp that appeared to be about 4-5 cm deep. The attending interrupted him at that point and said wait, it can't be that deep. She'd be right through her skull and into her brain at that point. The resident coughed, looked uncomfortable, and said yes, that's correct. Let's get to the head CT. Basically this poor woman had picked her scalp to the point where she'd gone right through the skull and started to pick at her brain. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.